Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to look at getting Visual Studio Code running with Godot uh, specifically for C-sharp development, although this will also apply for GD script development if that's your jam. And the reason why I'm looking at this again is because Godot 3.2 added Microsoft's language server protocol. Um, so basically now the uh, tool can talk directly to the Godot engine and learn a whole lot more. You get better intelligence, better integration, and so on. So what we're going to look at today is setting up Visual Studio Code and the tool chain so that you can do development at, at all entirely in Visual Studio Code. So without further ado, let's jump in and get a couple of the prerequisites down. Now first off, obviously you are going to need uh, the C Sharp or Mono version of Godot to follow along if you want to use C Sharp. You also need to use Godot 3.2 two or later. That's when the language server support was added. So make sure you've downloaded that guy. Next up, you're going to need to have some kind of a build chain installed. There are two ways to go about this. I guess technically three ways to go about this. You can install Visual Studio. You can install tools for Visual Studio, which is basically so you could just use the command line version. It's a much smaller download if you go with that approach. So either one of these will work for you or you can install Mono. So you need to have one of these build systems installed in order for C Sharp to even work on Godot. And now once you've actually got that installed, there's one more step here is let's say you went with the Visual Studio approach. This is Visual Studio 2019, which wants to be updated as you can see down here. What you want to do is go into tools, get tools and features. Now this is something you can set when you first install Visual Studio, but what you want to make sure is you have the right features install if you go the Visual Studio route. So here we go. What you want to do is come in here and make sure that you have, uh, I believe it is the Universal Windows Platform Development option here. You want to be able to develop using C Sharp. It might be this one. I'm not sure 100% which one it's under, but the key part is you want to have the .NET Desktop Development option available right here. And underneath that, you want to make sure you have .NET Framework 4.7 development tools installed. And assuming you have all of these things installed and ready to go, we are good and set to move on to Visual Studio Code. Now, obviously, I'm just going to assume you have Visual Studio and Code installed because if you want to work with Visual Studio Code, you need to have Visual Studio and Code. That one's a bit of a no-brainer. But once we've got it set up, there's a few configurations we need to do in Visual Studio Code before we are off to the races. So let's go here to the extension setting. As you can see, I have deleted all of my extensions for you good folks so you can see this from scratch. And the first thing we want to install is C Sharp support. Just go ahead, type C Sharp in the extensions. The extensions are available over here, this guy right there, and select C sharp. Go ahead and do an install. This will take ah, but a moment. Uh, I would have expected my window to pop up by now. Uh, so basically we want C sharp to install. Uh, next thing we want to do is install another one called Mono and it's the debugger. So Mono debug. Grab this guy right here and go ahead and do an install on it. And then once that is installed, we want to go ahead and do one last installation here. And I promise we are done now. We want to do Godot tools. So we want this guy right here. Just grab that one, go ahead and install it as well. Now, once again, a bit of a requirement is that Godot 3.2 has been installed on your machine. And so now that that installation is done, you're going to notice we've got this little message down here that we cannot connect to the GD script language server. And this is because it doesn't actually know where Godot is yet. Now you can go into the settings and configure this yourself, but there's a much easier way to go about doing this. So let's take the easy approach. So next step we got to do is if you haven't already, go into Godot, create a project somewhere, or open, if you've got an existing project, that's good. That's all you need to do at this point in time. So what we do with a new project or an existing project is we just go ahead in Visual Studio Code and open it up. So I created an empty project project earlier before I made this video called this uh, VSC Godot. Nothing in it. It's a very straightforward, simple project. We're just going to go ahead and open it. You see like so. And then you're going to see, oh, I can't connect to this. Now what I'm going to do is hit F1. And F1 brings up the command palette and then just type the word Godot. And you're going to see you have a number of different options here. You've got open workspace with the Godot editor, run workspace as the Godot project, and so on. The one we want to do is actually this one right here. Uh, and this will now say, okay, where is Godot? And this will save the setting for you. So we're going to go ahead just where it's down, where it's available. Of course, for me, that means it's in my downloads folder. Go ahead and select that. And then boom, it will fire up and load Godot. Now that other option we saw is also a way of running a Godot project without actually being in Godot. So you don't need to load Godot in the first place. But now you see we have Godot opened up for our project. We've got a live link now. So if I go ahead here and go uh, to, we'll create a new 2D scene here. Like so, we'll drop an icon in that scene. 
like so. And with this guy selected, let's go ahead and add a script to this guy. So we're gonna attach a GD script. Okay, icon.gd works for me. So here you see uh, our code is here. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and now, I haven't saved anything, haven't done anything. We're gonna switch back over to Visual Studio and you will see icon.gd is automatically there. So I didn't have to save anything on the one end, it automatically communicates the two back and forth. So now I can come down, let's just go ahead and get rid of you. Uh, I can come down here and I could type some code in. So for example, let's print hello from GD script out like so, and we'll save that. So now if we head on back over here, you can see it's automatically updated. So you have a live link between the two. But what I'm interested in now is actually C Sharp support, specifically getting C Sharp debugging working between the two. So let's go ahead. Uh, we're going to head on back over to the Godot game engine. We're gonna create another icon like you. So icon two here, when we'll attach a script to this guy, in this particular case, we will attach this as a C Sharp script, like so. So we're gonna go ahead and create a C Sharp script, and here you can see our code is now available. If we head on back over to Visual Studio Code, we're gonna now have another option. So there is icon two, here is our code. Uh, so that's pretty cool. We got a link set up there. Now we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and be able to do some debugging. So I got here, let's go into this guy. We'll do a GD dot uh, print hello from C Sharp like so, and we could close that off. You see we're getting live language results. If this isn't working, by the way, it's probably because you don't have .NET Framework 4.7 installed or you don't have the re required mono debug and C Sharp, specifically the C Sharp in this case, uh, available. So now we've got that set up. We're good to go. We could flip on back over here. Uh, we could set up our project. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and save things and then we're gonna set our runtime project up. Come on, hurry up. There we go. All right, so there we go, we saw it. Our GD script code is running, our C Sharp is code is running, but we don't have any debugging going on. Well, let's fix that. So what we can do is come in here, go to project, project settings. You go down in project settings and locate mono, this tab right here, specifically debugger agent. Now what you wanna do is turn wait for debugger on, and the value here is in milliseconds. So this will give you three seconds to connect. Let's make that more like 15 seconds. So from when you start your application to the point where you could debug, you now have 15 seconds to debug it. And then the last thing you want here is this port number. Just go ahead and copy that. That's the port that Visual Studio Code and Godot are gonna communicate, communicate across. And once we got all that stuff, we're good to go. We'll close that out. And now we're gonna head back on over to Visual Studio Code. So now that we're here, uh, we can go ahead and go, uh, what do we wanna do next? All right, so we'll go back to our project right here. We wanna go into the debug category right here. Um, and we need to create a launch code. Now, if you do not see C Sharp Mono, once again, that is because this guy is missing, the mono debug. If you only have .NET Core, you are missing the one required thing. So what you wanna have is C Sharp Mono, so make sure that is installed. You just wanna come down here and change that port to the value you had from the other side. So now that is up and ready. What you can do is go ahead, come on back here, and you can start your game up. Uh, here, let me actually pick my project. All right, so the game is now running. It's going to wait 15 seconds for us to connect to it. Head on back over here. What we do is switch launch over to attach instead. Let's go back to our code and we'll set a breakpoint on this guy and run. So now this is going to connect. It is now attached. What you can see over here, uh, for example, this is now connected to the parent sprite object. So you can drill down and get uh, real-time information about the icon two that we are currently attached to. All of the classes and such are exposed. Uh, we can do real-time um, debugging of things. We can set watch points and breakpoints and so on. I don't have any variables or data or anything to work from at this point. So really all that I could do is jump in, jump out, continue and so on, or I can disconnect from it. So if we wanna go ahead, we continue our running. So there you see our call stack is gone. And then we are back over here and our code is running and happy. And really that is it. The only other thing to really showcase is you can come in here, we'll shut down Godot completely. So Godot is shut down. We hit the F1 bar. So the last time we said open workspace with the Godot editor, what we could do is run workspace as a Godot project. And if it already has been configured to know where the Godot executables are, uh, you can have it come here and it will run your project. Now the problem here, since we did that, is we are hitting our, oh, actually, no, we're not hitting our breakpoint. I don't know why we we're hanging. Oh, I think it's waiting that 15 seconds. 
Oh, that's a bit of a bug. Okay, so it looks like when you've got the wait for debug uh, uh, set up, you don't want to launch things that way. So we can go ahead, fire things up. <sighs> the other guy. And this will launch it for us. So it looks like when you've got it, if you don't have that wait for debugger, so if I come back here and go into the project settings, like so. So the one opens up the editor, the other one launches your code. But again, if you have this enabled, like so. So we don't have it waiting for us to debug. So we don't have any breakpoints. We're not doing any debugging. And then if I go ahead and run that guy, so I run this guy, then it will actually just go ahead and fire up and run our code. And you see there is the results being exported back out. So you don't need to open up the Godot engine at all. Unfortunately, what it seems is if you use this command, this run workspace as Godot project, um, you can't connect to the debugger. So if you want to do C-sharp debugging, it appears you have to go the open the workspace route and run the code directly from inside of Godot to then attach to the debugger. So uh, a bit of a gotcha there, but not a really a huge one. And the only real final thing that we've kind of got going on and let's fire Godot back up one more time. So I'll open up the Godot editor. And the last thing that you may want to do is you can come in here and you can actually uh, configure it so that your editor is um, using Visual Studio Code. So I'm actually completely in the wrong spot. We come back over here. What you want to do is go over here, go to editor settings. And if you want, you can change out your code editor here other external, use external, and then set up the path to uh, the Visual Studio code executable. Um, and then you can set some flags here to tell it directly which line to jump to so that if you want to go from one to the other. So if you'd rather have it when you create or run a script, so if I double click on a CS file here, have it open up in Visual Studio code, you can do so that way. So that's kind of the extent of it. Uh, that's Visual Studio Code running and controlling and debugging C Sharp applications and using the live language server between the two. So you get the GD script real time stuff as well. Uh, so if you'd rather do 99% of your coding outside of the Godot environment, you now have that opportunity and option and you have better integration. You've got, you know, again, debugging support that isn't necessarily coming from the, the, the new language server stuff. That's more the GD script stuff is what improves in that regard. So anyways, that is it. Hopefully a few of you guys found that useful, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.